Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, we are back at One Straw Farm today. It's been a few weeks because uh, somebody, yours truly, was quite sick and didn't want anybody else to get sick. Um, so we basically took a few weeks off. It wasn't by choice, um, but we are back here doing the last couple of things on the tractor and uh, we're about to finish those things up and then hopefully at the end of this week we will be taking this up to New York to the farm and we're going to be seeing if uh, this 60 year old Ford Powermaster and the uh, it says Titan implement but they are now Ironcraft FL165 flail mower is going to be up to the task of whipping our uh, roads and our fields into shape. They have not been cut all year, so it's going to be quite a challenge. Um, Christine is currently um swapping Rassle, out i'm wrestling a steering wheel so we got the old steering wheel you can see the you know the plastic and the rubber is pretty much cracked off and whatever and we just thought it might be nice to have the nice new uh, feels better aftermarket um so she is in the process of taking the steering wheel off will it come straight off or do you need a gear puller i mean if you get a bit of tiny wiggle and it comes right off it'll come off and if not we need a gear puller Gonna need a gear puller, folks. It'd be so much easier if I knew what that was, but I'm about to learn. All right, well, let's go find it. All right, for those of you who don't know what a gear puller is or how it works, George is about to show all of us. So give me a second, we're gonna turn this around. So this is a gear puller. Um, generally speaking, when you're talking about on engines and things, which is the gear part, you'd have a uh, gear that is set on oftentimes a, like a splined drive shaft or something, and it's compressed on. And so what you're trying to do is take these little fingers on the puller and get them around the back side of the gear and then use this screw to push on the shaft to pull the gear off. Um, but that will work on this steering wheel as well. So let me see if I can get this adjusted. You basically just back out the threaded rod. I've got a horse fly biting me until you can get these little fingers back behind the gear, in this case, the steering wheel. And I'm gonna try to kind of physically hold it somewhat centered. Sometimes you can actually use a, um, like a rubber band or another something to pull tight on these to hold them all in place. I don't think I need that. I think that I should be able to get this just using my hand. You've actually done this before, right? Yeah. On this one. Because I had to see there are so two. So can you not put those levers down or? Well, yeah, but this gravity is fighting me. Gotcha. So obviously this is mounted at a angle. And so gravity is pulling this one arm out. It's actually swinging out because of gravity. So I just need to get, I'm trying to get this thing centered so I don't screw up any threads and just, Give us a little bit of snug. That should hold it in place. And then we're using a 5-8 socket. Ah, it came off again. <laughs> Is this a two-handed operation? Well, again. It's just a little finicky. Damn it. So I'm going to put this down. I think maybe two hands will get this done. So let's see. You now got, that it's loosened. I'm turn these a little bit so they're straight. So when I put the new one on, it's lined up correctly. All right, so basically it just, you know, it allowed it to pull loose. And so it's this part here that it gets kind of yeah, stuck you know. and gunked up on. And so I have already had this off once because Ford made two different kinds of these. One of them is splined. You can see all these thin splines. That's what it seats into and allows you to turn that shaft. There's another kind that actually has a cotter pin. So it just one little notch that you drop the pin in and that's what holds it in place gotcha um so we I need to, to know which one yeah i had to see which kind we had prior to getting the replacement so all right old one off new one on 
because this thing is covered in uh, in uh, paint, we may have to give it a little tappy tap tap. Because <laughs> I feel it's not just sliding down on there. I think that's because it's got paint in the splines. So I'm going to get a small socket and I'm going to get a hammer. We're going to tap it. So the socket protects the bolt? Well, where you have to tap down on this to get it to go on. The bolt, if I'm hitting, if I... If I'm hitting it with the hammer, then I'm just hitting the hole. Gotcha. It's not protecting anything. It's actually creating, putting force onto the, onto the actual uh, steering wheel. Makes sense. Obviously, in a perfect world, you're not doing this. But in a perfect world, it's not covered in paint. Um, you know, two millimeters of heavy duty paint, which is what the problem is. So I'm just gonna do this. I know this will seat further down. Feels like it kind of seated. I'm gonna put a little cap on there. And then um, once we torque down, it should pull it all the rest of the way. This uh, little metal thing will bend. Yeah, it's very, very thin aluminum, and it's already beat up pretty good. So I'm actually going to go ahead and get this seated all the way, and then take it off, and, and then take it, it off, and put it back on. So I don't ruin that. So smart. So yeah, that's really stiff, but I can feel it's moving. You know, and that means that it's just the paint, you know, is kind of getting in the way, if you will. It doesn't need to be on there crazy tight, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of drive it home, which I've done. And now I'm going to take it back off, put the, the fancy power steering thing on there. So right now it's super loose. Nice. It's probably also worth, you know, I think we've given some small shout outs to Drew and one straw farm, but... I think it's worth a shout out because we have had the the blessing and good fortune to be able to work on the tractor at someone's farm who has all of the tools. Because this is a, a tractor that's had a lot of farm repairs over the years, um, the nuts, the bolts are all slightly different sizes. Some are metric, some are SAE. <laughs> you, don't, you just don't know. So to have all of the tools that we needed to work on this would have been a near impossibility without access to um, to Drew and some of the help that he's given. So Yeah, I mean, I have a pretty extensive mechanics kit. Ironically, as we got working on this, I realized that I had a very extensive metric kit from all my work on motorcycles and foreign vehicles, which this, of course, is, you know, old technology. It is not metric. Um, so, you know, a lot of the stuff, even basic wrenches, I didn't personally own because I just didn't work on American-made vehicles much but then when you get into these tractor sizes you start getting into seven eighths one inch one in one sixteenth sockets that most people don't have in their kit because it's heavy duty truck and or tractor sizes not car sizes so like for instance this is that's a one in one sixteenths nut um, and there's a lot on this tractor that we've come across that is larger than your average mechanics kit stuff so it was wonderful to have an actual farm shop that has a full complement of tools because they're keeping a half dozen tractors running thank you drew thank you joe one straw farm if you're in the maryland area one straw farm online they do an amazing csa um, get your organic locally produced vegetables all year round there will be a link to their csa subscription in the video below Okay, so we're prepping to do an oil change on the tractor. Um, we knew it needed it when we bought her. We got the oil filter with her because the guy who sold it to us had not gotten around to doing it. So he was like, you know, you're gonna want this. 
All right, we're under the tractor. All right, so um, here's the oil pan drain plug. It's actually a really big, it's the size of a like a modern oil filter, the plug. And the reason for that is, is because it has an O-ring in here and in the top of it, there's a big screen that keeps debris from going back up into the pump. I have no idea what the interior of this looks like because I've never had it open. In fact, I don't know if the previous owner had it open. He said to change the oil to me like, I don't know how many times <laughs> when I bought it from him. Um, what I do know is we just ran it for a little bit so the oil should be warm. This is approximately, it's a square, uh, you know, lug. So it's not a common fastener shape, but it's approximately one and one sixteenths. Uh, give or take, a one and one sixteenths does fit. It's a little bit loose, but it should work. And I've already given this like a little bit of a heave ho and it doesn't want to go anywhere. So I'm about to give it the little tappy tap tap. We're gonna see. This might, hopefully it, we don't uh, ruin this oil. Plug. That would be bad. I mean, I can get a new one. Man, that is really, really on there. Okay, so I had to use a little muscle to get this broken loose, but it, it, it appears like this has not been opened in quite some time. But there we go, we got it going. So once, you know, once you get it loose, it pretty much is a hand tight kind of deal. Honestly, my experience with these is you don't really want to tighten them down that hard because there's no need, you know. Um, this is maybe going to be really messy. I don't know. It sounds, I mean, honestly, this drip, this pan sounds like damn near bone dry, which kind of bothers me. Um, Maybe that is why he was saying to change the oil because there's no oil in it. <laughs> I feel but, like the message should have been add the oil if that's yeah, true. Um, so I'm going to... Oh. Well, it's got oil in it. And that was surprisingly clean. Oh, man. The uh, wind... The wind is not helping yeah. us. <laughs> okay, so um, I just got this off. I mean, it's pretty black, but it's actually not... It's not horrible and it doesn't smell burn, so that's good. Um, and I don't really see, I mean, there's a tiny bit of grit in here, but honestly, this is the way this is supposed to work is there's supposed to be an O-ring here and there's supposed to be a screen that's actually connected to this and sits up like this high. The one in here is either missing or it's up in the pan itself. Um, I'm gonna, for now, I'm just gonna put it back together as is. It's gonna be what it is, you know? I made, it just made a giant mess because the way these things drain is this hole is, you know, it's this big open hole and the oil is coming from all edges of the oil, the, the, all edges of the hole, like a funnel of oil with air in the middle and the wind was blowing, so it went everywhere. It didn't just go straight down, you know, with a modern oil plug, you'll see they're only about maybe this big and it comes down in a stream. This made a giant mess, um, but. Here's the giant mess. <laughs> yeah, the, um, this is very encouraging. I mean, this is like the lowest part of the pan and I can feel sludge down in this cap, but there's no like metal shards, you know? So that's good. That means that this engine is not like disintegrating. It's not, you know, it's it's been changed and it's not, there's not metal shavings all in it. So I'm liking this. It was very low on oil. This is supposed to have um, five quarts in it. And I would say that this is only maybe three, three and a half. So um, we'll get this cleaned up and we'll get this back on, get the oil filter off and check out the breather next. Okay, so anyway, so I got this cleaned up. Um, and I cleaned up the, the surface. You'll see the screen was actually in there. I think that these are supposed to stay connected to the drain plug, but it did come out. It was up in the thing. So I'm putting this back in place. Uh, all right, where's my wrench? Uh, 
I didn't put it away. I just cleaned yep, it off. It's right here. <laughs> Tighten this up and then we're going to pull the oil filter and we're going to check the oil breather and then we'll fill it up with oil. Depending on what tractor you have, if you have these old uh, 01 series, the, pa the Power Master tractors, um, they had this old, interesting style oil filter system that actually went into the engine. Um, most people have retrofitted them with this adapter, which this one has. And you can see this is a new FL1A, a Ford canister filter. It makes it a lot easier to change. Um, I am going to get this one loose. not to make a giant mess here. I mean, it's, you know, they didn't, messy. they didn't set these things up to make them clean, to change the oil for sure. Um, but just trying to keep this going into the, uh, the oil tray. All right. Um, so you'll see, if you look in here, you see this fitting and this nut and this screw and the seal, that's all aftermarket, kind of. That didn't come with the tractor. That's so that you can use a new modern style canister filter on this tractor. We have a brand new one. I'm gonna wipe off around the seal. Gonna dispose of that stuff. All right, so I've got my new official Ford Motorcraft FL1A filter. I don't think it needs to necessarily be Ford Motorcraft, but just like changing the oil on anything, I'm taking a little bit of fresh oil and I'm just putting it on the seal here. I'm gonna put some oil in this filter, but I'm not gonna go crazy because you have to mount it sideways. So I don't really wanna make a giant mess all over myself, um, but I will add like half a canister to it so that it's partially filled up. And when I put it on, it doesn't have to work quite as hard. All right, I'm not make, I'm not doing this neatly for sure. I'm definitely making a mess. Ah, oh, come on, you bugger. <laughs> Best laid plans. I know. Well, I was trying to, that was why I didn't want to fill it all the way up because I knew that this is gonna be a little messy going on. And now I've got oil all over Your the canister and the, the canister, can. so hang on a second. All right, so I'm back. I've got myself a little shop rag. I'm just gonna wipe off my canister so I can actually get a grip on it. When I do these, I like to just basically hand snug them. You don't have to go crazy. Um, they have a nice rubber you know, uh, seal on there and that holds it on pretty tight. Um, if anything, you know, sometimes you give it, if you've got a, a filter strap, you know, maybe an eighth of a turn snug, but really that's even almost too much. I think if you can get it hand tight, so I can still turn this a little bit. I've got a lot of hand strength though. So yeah, I was going to say George's hand tight and Christine's hand tight. Yeah, very, very but different. That's, that should be plenty tight. I'm just going to wipe this little bit of oil off here. We're going to clean this tractor up a tiny bit today as well. But that's our filter in place. Our last thing to do is to check our oil breather and then fill the tractor with What's oil. What's an oil breather? We're gonna show you in a second. Excellent. All right, so here's the oil breather. It's basically just a, a metal cap held on by a wing nut and a screw. And- uh, What are you calling wing nut? It is, I think it's bait. It's kind of like, you know, Brillo pad in here. That's what it should be. This one actually doesn't look that bad. All right, so you got, um, I mean, I've seen these, seen people pull these out and they are so gunked up and so full of disintegrating junk that they're almost not usable. I am gonna <laughs> say we are again missing a gasket. 
which I have already found replacement parts for. Okay. Same gasket for the breather and the oil filter. So I've got two of those in my car. All right. So this just sits, this just smashes down in there and that, you know, lets the, the crankcase breathe through this material. So I wanted to see two things. I wanted to see, you know, what this material looked like. This looks pretty good. We'll just clean this out with a little bit of parts cleaner and clean up the, the cover, put it back together. Um, and that's where our oil goes. So we'll clean the dirt off this as well, you know, but this is good to go. Nice. So we've cleaned up our breather valve. We took it apart. We sprayed out using a, uh, a cleaner, the filter, which is sort of a, like a Brillo pad material. Put it all back together. You gotta make sure you wanna get your little uh, wool gasket there intact. So I'm gonna set this aside. And as I said, we're missing the rubber gasket, so yep. I will get one, a replacement. Um, so this right here is where you fill your oil. This engine takes uh, five quarts, um, four quarts to a gallon. We're gonna go ahead and just It has a smaller opening than the pipe I did notice, so it looks like yeah. it doesn't want you to go in too fast. No worries. So I looked at a lot of different things here, people talking about all different kinds of oils and what you use and what you shouldn't use and whatever. And then of course, you know, you can look at what the manual says and the manual used to call for a much more heavy duty oil. Um, but from what I've heard from people that seem to know what they're doing, people that actually do restorations and remanufacturing of these old engines and are really into specifically the Ford 600 and 601 and 800 and 801 series, they say that a really good heavy duty truck oil, a 1540 is actually what you want. That's gonna be a good all purpose oil for a tractor like this. Um, and that it's gonna keep it running really well. That it has additives in it that are beneficial for these old engines. Um, and that even though 15W40 may seem a little on the thin side compared to what the original specs were, that the quality and the, the type of oils that are made today are so different that this is really the best bet. So that's what I'm going with. I don't know any better. All right, that's four quarts. We need one quart from our other jug and we should be good to go. We're gonna put our, uh, our breather valve back on. Good. And oh, it just sets in there? Yeah, well, it, it's, we, it presses in. Oh, okay. Yes, it is, it is quite a firm fit. Um, you made it look so easy. Then we're gonna start her back up and see what happens. here because of the the wind but um, we should be good to go now all right we have a steady list of mini projects that we're working on to just sort of finish up so oil change done we switched around the roller on the flail mower which looks like maybe it got put in backwards we're not sure um, so that we could get to the grease fittings more easily and unfortunately, that was a two-person job, so I didn't get it filmed because I wasn't prepared with a tripod. This also took two people to kind of get it on, but George is tightening down the repainted bumper. He pounded it out a little bit, hit some of the areas you can see. This is really not to get it back to showroom or anything, but it's really intended to just make sure that we get the rust taken care of so that we're not continuing to have issues. All right, the last part of assembly is the radiator cover, the grill, which George has done a beautiful job painting. <laughs> he bent it back into shape, 
and now we have to put the screws in and he made the point which is a great one you can kind of see there's a slight angle here so the longer screws have to go in the top to be able to reach back and the um, housing for it sticks out a little bit and then the shorter screws go on the bottom well the important part of this is that if you take the longer screws to attach the radiator cover to the to the front of the tractor, you will punch a hole through the radiator. On the bottom. That's the important part. The important part is that these are half an inch to three quarters of an inch longer than they need to be down here. And if you seat them all the way, the wrong one, you will punch a hole in your radiator. And so you can see, can you show the difference? So this is the original. Well, let me show, see top down. Top down like this. So the original here had like a little neck on it. These Maybe. are replacements. Maybe. It's hard to know. Based on what I can see. And so people are using the um, nuts to limit it. So George was just making sure that the right ones are in the right place. And this is now what the front end of her looks like. You may notice that all of a sudden the, change, the color of the grill changed. So we were putting it on and realized that the length of the bolts are very specific and you can see that this mesh is sort of wavy and it has to be reversed. So unfortunately, the beautiful paint job that George did- um, <laughs> I don't know if I would call it beautiful. Had to, be, had to be sacrificed and he did a lot of bending to get it back into a rough shape. However, with some of these tractors, they're not actually the shape that they seem like they should be because things have happened to them. So. As you can see, he meticulously bent it out. Now he's got to bend it back in order to get it to fit. But she well, still looks really nice. It was so dented up and so beat up the whole front end. Yeah. That it was just really, really bad. So I just took a dolly and a hammer and worked it out to make it look decent. It's not great, but you know, it was But you know, he, he did a little he did it a little too well. Is what obviously we're not the, the correct shape for fitting onto the front of this tractor. Um, so my hope is that once we get it all lined up and screwed together, that'll kind of take the shape of the tractor again. So this last one's given us a little bit of a bear, but uh, you can see how it's going to look. You probably don't need to watch us struggle. Here we go. Good enough. All right. Has been declared good enough. So there we are. <laughs> together. There is a grill over top of the radiator again. And actually and it, that kind of old patina looks pretty nice. Yeah, I was going to say we can take it off and paint it black someday, but we're going to go with patina. <laughs>